Okay, let's continue looking at how to develop the Amigos website. And I'm going to start now on the section that has the photos of the Amigos. So I've gone ahead and saved out three of them as SVGs. I just have one less left to do, Clortho, so let's do that one. So I'm gonna save it as an SVG, just like I mentioned. I wanna go to SVG here and I wanna put it in my folder. All right, so just press okay on that. We don't need to change any of those and we're good. So I now have all four of them saved into my images folder. You can see the SVGs are all in here. Okay, so let's go back to our HTML and let's start putting this in here. So I'm gonna start with the H2 which is the Amigos. So that's my H2 here for the content. And before I go any further, let's go ahead and style that. So I'm gonna target the H2. Um, if we look in Photoshop, you can see that the H2 is using the PT Sans font. So we're gonna start with that. So font family. What size, 1.5 maybe, let's try that. And PT Sans Arrow, all right. See how that looks in Chrome. That's uh, not working for some reason. Did I spell that correctly? Oh, I forgot a unit here on my font size. That should be M. Okay, there we go. So 1.5 is a little bit small, I think. Um, let's go make it 1.75, that ought to do. There we go, that looks pretty good. And I just wanna adjust the margins. Um, so let's go margin, uh, let's do 1M on the top and the bottom and zero everywhere else. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Okay, so let's move on to the actual images. Now, if we look in Photoshop, they look to me like they are figures with fig captions because they have these captions on them. And I feel like they might be links too. Like maybe you can click on each of the superheroes and get some more information about them. So maybe using a link also would be good. And I would go even further to say that they're probably just a list of the Amigos. So we'll put them in a list too. So we'll go UL, let's put a class on this. Let's call it image boxes. All right, now we're gonna have LIs for each of these. We'll give these classes also. Image box, uh, let's just call it image box. And then inside here, I wanna have my link elements because I feel like they might link to more information about that superhero. And then in here even further, we'll have our figures and let's give these a class of image box wrapper. All right. And in here, we're gonna want our image tag. Clortho is, no, Gazor is first. All right, and then we want our fig caption. And let's give a class to this too, Angie Box um, Caption. All right, um, guess we need to put our text in here, Clortho. Now, You'll notice that I put classes on all of these things. I have a class in the UL and the LI and the figure and the fig caption. So I put classes on all of those because chances are I'll be using a figure and a fig caption again later on. So I wanna distinguish these from the rest of them. And the other thing you may notice is right here, I've left the alt attribute empty. The reason I didn't put anything in there is because I have a caption right here. So if the information that you put in the alt is exactly the same as what you put in your fig caption, you only need to put it in one place, which would be the fig caption. Okay, so let's copy this and we'll make four more of them. There we go. So let's go and change the, the names here. Who comes next? Zool. All right. 
right. And bins. And the last one is Clortho. Oh, <laughs> I made a mistake on the top there. You see, I put Clortho instead of Vins or instead of Gazora. So let me go back and change that. Okay, let's go to Chrome and see how this looks. There we go. We have all our SVGs in. They're obviously too big right now, but that's okay. So now let's go and start our styles here. So I have the classes of image boxes, image box, image box wrapper, and image box caption. So let's go in here. I'm going to start with image boxes because I want to get, I want to set up my margins and I want to get rid of the bullets. So let's go margin 1.5 M on the top and bottom and zero on the left and right. And I'm just going to get rid of the padding too, because lists have padding and I'll get rid of the bullets. All right. So that should look pretty good. Okay, cool. Um, what we probably also want to do is target all images and make them display block and give them a width of 100% so that they scale nicely with our website. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. All right, what else do we have? So let's target the image box itself, which is the LIs, and let's get rid of their margins and paddings. All right. How's that look? That looks pretty okay. We still have some spacing over here. That is probably coming from the figures themselves. So that we named IMG box wrapper. So let's target it and get rid of its margin and padding. All right. And we probably also want to set that to display block because by default figures, I believe are inline block level elements instead of just block level. Okay. So that's closer to what we're looking for. So now what we want to do is we want to get them beside each other. And if we look in here, they're, all, they're taking up about half of the space, right? So let's go target the image box itself and we'll say float left and put a width of 50% on them. Now again, if we look in our HTML, the image boxes are the children that are directly inside of the image box elements are directly inside of image boxes. So that means all of the children of image boxes is floated. So we are going to have to do a clear fix on this just to be sure that it clears all of its floated children. So there we go. We have them beside each other now, which is what the float is doing for us. And let me just put a background image on, or a background color on them so we can actually see where they are. What's the background color we have in Photoshop here? It's this lighter gray. So let's use that one, CCC, okay. So that is image box, background color. Okay. So there we go. You can see they line up nicely on the right and or the right and the left, but they don't have enough space between them and they don't have any space underneath them like they do in Photoshop. So we want to be able to put 10 PX in the middle of them because that's how much space we have on both sides. And I want to keep it nice and even. So what we could do is we could instead use the newer box model, which has the padding inside of the width, and it's called the border box. So let's do this. We'll do box sizing, border box. And then if we were to put padding on the left-hand side and the bottom, you would see that it would create the nice space that we're looking for without disrupting our 50% width. So let's go and look at that. Oh, that didn't do anything Oop. for some reason. Mm, I don't know why. Let's try putting the WebKit board box sizing on here. Nope. Hmm. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong key. Um, I don't know what's going on. Oh, I understand what I did wrong. Let's put this this shadow or the background color onto the onto the figure itself instead of up here on the image box. 
and that should give us more of the look we're going for. There we go. So the reason we couldn't see it a second ago was because I had the background color, I had the background color here on the image box, so it was still behind the padding, but I wanted it on the figure instead of the LI. So that gives us the close to the effect we're looking for, but you can see there's more space over here. So this looks like it's doubled. So this is 20 as opposed to the 10 we want. So I'm gonna use that same negative margin trick again, and I'm gonna do it on this one here. So I still want 1.5 on the bottom, but I wanna do negative 10 margins on the left. So that's to accommodate the 10 PX of padding I have here. How does that look? Uh, that's exactly what we're looking for. So just to recap what I did there to make it look exactly like that is I targeted the image box, which if you remember is the LI, and I gave it a padding on only one of its sides, so 10px. This 10px is to match the padding on the left and right of our body. So this creates this nice space between the, the uh, amigos. And you can see here, here's this 10px is for the bottom right here. So that's creating the space there. And then because we're mixing units here, we have a padding of 10px and a width of 50%. With the traditional box model, that would mean that our total width would now be 50% plus 20px. And that would force these boxes down onto their, to their own line because it exceeds the amount of available space. So what we do instead is we turn on box sizing border box. And that allows us to have a padding and the padding will no longer affect, affect the total width of our element. So the elements are still 50% and the padding is inside of that. And then because they have padding on them, I wanna create the nice alignment. So I'm doing the negative margin trick on the wrapper on their parent element to make sure everything lines up perfectly. All right, so what's next? We probably want to put our borders and our, our border radius on it. So let's go grab the color here. I want that color. Let's go border, 3px, solid. I'm not sure if 3px is quite the right size. wonder if we can tell from in here. And it's 2px in here. Okay, so let's go switch it to 2px. All right. Okay, and then we'll do our, we'll put our box, our border radius on that. Border radius 8px. Again, I'm just kind of guessing here. That looks pretty decent. Okay. And so they're all pretty much looking good, except the text is different. So now this here, if we look in Photoshop, this is a time where we would want to use position absolute because we want the, these captions to always remain sort of near the bottom of this box. So we can use position absolute to position them to the bottom of the box. But if we turn these captions to position absolute, by default, they'll position against the body. We want them to, to position against these figures themselves. So those would have to be position relative. So these here are my figures. So I'm gonna set position relative on them. And then I can target my image box captions and set position absolute on them. All right, so let's put some padding on them while we're in here. Uh, 0.4M and zero, we don't need any on the top and bottom. And then, or sorry, we don't need any on the left and right, but we do want it on the top and bottom. We wanna give them a width too. Let's make them 100% wide. Let's do a background color. So I want it to be semi-transparent like that. So I'm gonna use RGBA, 0.1, okay. So that looks pretty close. You can see that now they're outside of our uh, flow, but they're not in the right place. So I wanna position them up from the bottom of, of my figure. So I'm going to target their bottom coordinate and set the bottom to say, let's say 12px. There we go, so that looks pretty good. 
Um, we just need to center them and a few other things. So let's go text align center. And we give them a color. Not sure what color they are. I think it's just black. No, it's dark gray. All right. Cool. There we go. So I think the padding on the top is and bottom is a little bit much. Let's change that to just two. Keep hitting that wrong key there. All right. That looks pretty good. Cool. So there we go. So we absolutely positioned the fig captions, but because we wanted their positioning to be within the figure itself, we set the figure to be position relative and the fig captions to be position absolute. So let's go back and look at that and let's compare that to Photoshop. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's check it again and see if it resizes. All right, so it still does what we're looking for. Cool, I think that's it.